Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining class, The Faithful Three. <laughs> uh, can I ask uh, John Paul to lead us in worship? Uh, sorry, worship, I'm saying, can lead us in prayer this morning? Please. So, yeah. Father, we want to thank you for this morning, Lord, as we come before your presence to learn from your word. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak to our hearts and open the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that we would be able to listen to your voice and also to apply what we learn in our lives, God. We submit personally uh, into your mighty hands, O oh God, we pray that you would anoint her um, and speak through her, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Just a minute. I'll... Okay, so uh, remember what we studied last week, which chapter we were learning, what we were studying about, which doctrine we were studying about. Anyone remembers? Angels, thank you, Anita. So, uh, what did we learn about the doctrine of angels? Anyone remembers? Yes, go ahead, Anita. Ma'am, angels are created spiritual beings uh, with moral judgment and high intelligence. Thank you. So they are created uh, spiritual beings uh, and they have uh, moral judgment and high intelligence. Uh, the different types of angels. Okay, thank you, Lubega. What else did we learn about angels? They created uh, beings, they're not human beings, but they're spiritual beings uh, with high, uh, you know, intelligence and uh, moral judgment. Uh, we also saw that they are many in number. Uh, they are mighty and have great power. Uh, we also saw that angels uh, sing praises to God. Uh, and what do angels do for us? They minister to God by singing praises to him. And how do they minister to us? They guard and protect us. Thank you, Anita. They guard and protect us. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, anytime we know that we would, we possibly could have had an accident or even if you had an accident and, you know, we uh, escaped unharmed. It's because of the angels that God has sent to guard and uh, protect us. Angels also minister to us, uh, care for us. Um, so they, they are uh, there to minister to us uh, according to what God tells them to do. We also see that since angels are created beings, uh, you know, uh, and they are mighty and have great power, but we know that they are not omnipresent. Uh, they are not um, omnipotent. Uh, and uh, since they are spiritual beings, they are also not omniscient. They don't know everything. So they are not God. They are created uh, spiritual beings uh, who worship God and um, uh, do what he asks them to do. Okay, then we looked at how we need to relate to angels. Uh, we said that we need to be aware of angels in our lives. Uh, we need to be open to them uh, ministering to us. Um, and then we also looked at how we need to be aware, uh, beware of receiving false doctrines from um, angels. Um, and the Bible warns us about this. The Bible warns us against uh, receiving false doctrines from uh, supposed angels, angels who are not uh, from, you know, coming from the throne room of God, from heaven, uh, but uh, angels of darkness, uh, Satan and his uh, demonic forces. Um, and so Paul warns us about this in Galatians chapter 1, verse 18, uh, where he makes known to us that there is a possibility that, you know, that uh, these, um, uh, that Satan and his demonic forces can possibly uh, deceive us. 
um, and he mentions about this in 2 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 14, where he says, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of uh, light. Okay, And then we look at one example uh, in the Bible uh, about, um, uh, about this lying prophet who deceived the man of God in 1 Kings chapter 13, where uh, he says in verse 18 that uh, this lying prophet says that an angel spoke to me uh, by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. And we see that this man of God, uh, who God warns that he should not return back uh, the way that he came and he should not uh, eat bread or drink water in that place that he is going to meet the king. But uh, he gets deceived by this uh, prophet um, who is himself deceived by, uh, who says an angel spoke to him. And we see what happens that, uh, you know, this uh, this man of God goes with this prophet to his home just before he's going to eat the meal. Uh, you know, this uh, lying prophet receives the word and he says that um, because he has disobeyed, uh, the, the man of God is going to die. We see how he goes on his journey and uh, a lion kills him. And uh, this uh, lion prophet brings him back and uh, buries him. So we see that, you know, um, uh, there are instances of false doctrines uh, um, or, uh, you know, uh, guidance being conveyed by uh, deceptive angels that are demons, uh, uh, you know, and it's interesting that these, uh, this example shows us that there is a clear possibility of satanic uh, uh, deception uh, tempting us, uh, leading us astray to disobey the clear teachings uh, uh, that has been given to us in scripture, uh, clear commandments that God has given uh, to us. So uh, we too can be deceived by, uh, you know, so-called the angel of light that is Satan and his demons. Uh, but, you know, whatever we hear, we need to always go back and see if it is in line with what scripture says. Uh, uh, is it in line with the revealed word of uh, God? Another example that we can look at is, um, you know, uh, um, uh, especially Christians need to be uh, to be kept to keep themselves away from uh, the claims of the Mormons, uh, because uh, uh, Joseph Smith, who kind of uh, started this whole movement of the Mormons, uh, said that an angel called Morini spoke to him and revealed to him the basis of the Mormon uh, religion. And we know that their teachings are clearly against uh, the scriptures, the doctrines, uh, especially the doctrine of Trinity, the person, work of Christ, uh, justification by faith alone, and many other doctrines that is quite contrary to what uh, the Mormons believe. And um, so we see that, you know, this angel brings about these uh, revelations to them. Uh, to this uh, this man called Joseph um, Smith. And uh, so we need to be warned against these kind of uh, uh, accepting these kind of claims because, uh, you know, we learned in uh, the lesson when we learned about canon of scripture that everything that God uh, wanted to be revealed is revealed to us uh, in his word uh, in the Old Testament, in the person and work of Jesus Christ, through the writings of um, uh, the apostles and Paul. So everything that God wanted uh, for us to know, what he wanted to be revealed uh, to us, is already been given in scripture. Uh, and anyone who's claiming, you know, henceforth, or who claims that they are receiving additional revelation of doctrine, uh, from angels, uh, sh we should immediately reject that as false because we know that uh, whatever God has wanted for us to, or whatever God wanted to be revealed to us has already been revealed to us through scripture uh, and uh, nothing will be added to that. Uh, but everything what 
uh, you know, we will understand or what God will speak to us will be based on uh, the revealed word that he, uh, is in scripture. And so uh, scripture is our uh, basis, our foundation uh, is what we go back to. Even when we receive a prophetic word, we go and pray about it. We s see if it's in line with scripture um, and it's not against scriptures, uh, what scripture teaches us, the doctrines of scripture. Uh, even if we hear somebody teaching us something new and they say that this was revealed to them by an angel, you know, uh, we need to go and see if it is in line with what is uh, uh, in God's word. And we know that God's word from beginning to end never contradicts itself. Uh, and uh, truth runs throughout the entire scripture. And so we need to uh, look at all of these various doctrines in the light of um, or the new teachings or new revelations that people bring in the light of what has already been revealed to us in scripture. And something that is not revealed to us in scripture, we need to immediately reject that as uh, false. Okay. So should we pray and uh, uh, seek angels and worship them? What do you think? Do we need, should we pray to angels? So uh, do we need to seek uh, them because they protect and guard us and minister to us? Should we seek them? Should we pray to them? Uh, should we worship them? Okay, Lubega strongly says not at all. Okay, thank you, Zilatoli. Yes, we shouldn't. Uh, uh, how do we know this? It's given to us in uh, scripture, um, Revel uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, and uh, Revelation chapter nine, 19, verse 10. Okay. Mm. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18 says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with ideal notions by their unspiritual mind. So Paul is writing to the church at Colossae and uh, he's saying that, you know, those who worship idols, uh, angels, sorry, uh, you know, they are people who are puffed up with ideal uh, notions, uh, you know, they don't know the truth. They don't believe the truth. They don't even know what they're believing. Uh, and they are somebody who have an unspiritual mind um, and, uh, and don't follow them or don't give in to their teachings or what they are uh, saying. But it's interesting to note what uh, is mentioned in um, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. So can one of you please read Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, please? Revelation 19.10, and I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, see that you do not do that. I'm your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Thank you. So here we see that uh, John, who's uh, writing uh, the book of Revelation, has been given all of these uh, uh, you know, uh, his, in his vision, he's seeing, uh, you know, all of heaven and uh, uh, the, the angel is uh, revealing things to him, showing things to him. Uh, and uh, we see that he's so awed uh, at, uh, uh, you know, uh, the awesomeness of God's presence, uh, the greatness that he just falls at uh, and begins to worship the angel. Uh, but the angel says, you know, do not uh, do that because I'm your fellow brethren um, and your fellow servant. Uh, but he says, worship God. Okay, so that is the, the main emphasis that we need to worship God and not worship any saints, apostles, uh, angels, God, man, uh, nobody, but just worship God. Okay, so this is about uh, uh, briefly about angels. Uh, anyone has any questions? Okay. 
Any questions anyone has about the doctrine of angels? Does the scripture mention any specific names of angels? Yes, it mentioned Angel Michael. Thank you, Isaac. Yes, uh, uh, Angel uh, Michael and also uh, Gabriel and Lucifer. Yes, Satan, Devil. Okay, so we see that Michael is mentioned in Jude chapter 9, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and 8, and, uh, and in Daniel chapter 10, verses 13 and 21. Uh, where he's called as uh, Michael, one of the chief uh, princes, um, uh, sorry, chief prince. And uh, we also see that the angel Gabriel is mentioned in Daniel chapter 8, verse uh, 16, and uh, chapter 9, verse 21, uh, as a messenger who comes uh, from God uh, to speak to Daniel. Uh, we also know that, uh, you know, uh, the Christmas narrative, uh, uh, Gabriel is also, uh, you know, seen as the uh, angel who, uh, who is God's messenger to Zechariah and Mary. Uh, we read this in Luke chapter 1. Uh, and uh, we know that it is uh, Gabriel because the angel answers, Zechariah says, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God, Luke chapter 1 was uh, 19 and we also read in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 uh, in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin uh, and the virgin's uh, name was Mary so uh, we see the names of these two uh, angels specifically mentioned in uh, scripture okay Anyone has any questions about uh, angels, the doctrine of angels? Yes, can I ask one? Yes, sure, Isaac. Yes, how do angels uh, minister or serve us as human? Uh, from what we uh, know from uh, scripture, you know, we see that uh, they... Uh, you know, they protect us and they guard us, as um, I had uh, mentioned. Uh, you know, we read this in um, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, uh, where it says that are not all angels ministering spirits uh, sent to serve those who will inherit uh, salvation. Uh, we also read in Psalms chapter 91, verse 11, uh, that, you know, he, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your uh, ways. Uh, so we see that uh, they guard and protect us. Uh, they are spirit beings who minister to us. And uh, we also know that they guard and protect us so that our, our feet will even not dash against the uh, stone. So they, uh, they just basically protect us and guard us. Uh, also minister to us uh, in terms of caring for us, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe even showing us uh, like uh, we see in, um, uh, in the case of, uh, I think it was Peter uh, in the prison, right, uh, in Acts where... Uh, you know, Peter was asleep and uh, the angel comes to him and uh, wakes him up and uh, tells him, uh, wake up, you know, put on your clothes. So he puts on his clothes and then he uh, tells him to put on his, uh, uh, his cloak. And then, uh, you know, uh, he leads him out uh, and uh, Peter just follows uh, behind uh, uh, the angel. He thinks all the time that he is, uh, uh, he's seeing a, uh, a vision, but you know he they go past the guards, uh, and the guards, uh, uh, you know, they don't even notice uh, uh, Peter escaping. Uh, 
we also see that uh, uh, the angel opens the uh, the main gate of the prison and leads uh, peter out in the city and, uh, and the city streets and finally peter realizes when he's walking down the street that you know uh, he's all alone and uh, he realizes then that uh, uh, he his uh, you know he's not seeing a vision but it was real and it was an angel that uh, helped him so we see the angel tapping him uh, waking him up uh, we also see that uh, the angel uh, tells him to put on his clothes uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, and leads him out safely through the prison uh, doors of uh, the cell the, the main prison door into the street and uh, he goes uh, out free okay uh, and we also know that, uh, you know, when he goes and knocks on the door, when he goes to see the disciples, uh, it is this, uh, uh, you know, they think it is uh, Peter's angel who must be knocking at the door, uh, you know, but it is uh, Peter himself. Uh, so we see how, um, you know, uh, the angel ministered uh, to Peter. Uh, we also see how the angel brings uh, messages uh, uh, to uh, brought the message to Zechariah, brought God's message to um, uh, to Mary. Uh, we also see that um, uh, you know they fight uh, uh, battles for us in the spiritual realm. Um, uh, you know we see that the uh, the angel Michael, who is also called the Archangel in uh, Jude chapter nine. Uh, you know, uh, we we see him uh, mentioning also uh, in Daniel to Daniel in Daniel chapter ten that uh, you know that there was a war that uh, rose in heaven and Michael and his angels were fighting against a dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they were uh, defeated. Uh, so we see that they fight uh, uh, on our behalf. Um, you know, they defend us against uh, demonic um, uh, forces. Uh, uh, we see that uh, in, uh, that uh, Michael also is appeared uh, is referred to as a leader of the angelic army. Uh, so we see that angels fight uh, for us when uh, the demons come to attack us. They 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 fight against us. They also guard and protect us from the forces of darkness, from any physical harm and danger in this world. Uh, they also bring messages from God and they also, uh, you know, lead us and guide us uh, at times when we are lost, you know, like, uh, or uh, when we are in difficult situations like, uh, 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 like uh, Peter, you know, and um, maybe those others who were also been a minister too, you know, maybe we don't even know that uh, uh, Daniel in the lion's den was uh, also ministered. Uh, by angels and we also see that I think in uh, in, in um, uh, when Jesus was tempted uh, does anyone remember where that is I think it is in uh, Matthew chapter 4 we see that uh, you know after uh, Jesus was tempted, we see that, uh, you know, the angels come and uh, uh, minister to him. So we read this in, uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Uh, after he was tempted, the devil left him and behold, angels came and uh, ministered to uh, Jesus. So... We don't know in what way, maybe, you know, would have strengthened him or uh, bought him food or water or, you know, whatever. We don't know. But we see that, we just read that, behold, angels came and ministered to him. So does that help, uh, Isaac? Yes, no, thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions?
no questions, then uh, we'll move on to the last chapter. The Doctrine of uh, End Times. Uh, we did this uh, quite briefly in uh, the last lesson in Christology. Uh, here as well, we will just look at uh, uh, a few things. Uh, it's going to be quite repetitive, but um, we'll just look at uh, some things that we can uh, we can understand and learn about uh, the doctrine of the end times. And of course, you will be studying uh, this in the. This is very briefly mentioned in this lessons, both in Christology and in systematic theology, because you will study this in depth, uh, I think, next semester. Um, so that's why it's very briefly uh, mentioned. Okay, so we looked at uh, we look at the doctrine of uh, end times. Um, uh, the Greek word for uh, the doctrine of end times is eschatology, uh, which is the Greek word eschatos means last, and eschatology means the study of the last things, the last days, or the end times. Um, and we know that uh, the Bible talks about certain uh, major events that will happen uh, which will affect the entire human race towards the end of uh, the age uh, and uh, it specifically tells us about the second coming of Christ, talks about the millennium kingdom, uh, the final judgment, the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, So we'll just look at uh, the return of Christ. Um, uh, we know that the Lord Jesus often spoke about his return. He said he's coming back again. And we look at this in various scripture passages. Uh, even as we look at these scripture passages, we see that, uh, you know, his coming will be uh, all of a sudden. Uh, it will be something that's very personal but visible. And uh, it will be the bodily return of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's a few scriptures that uh, we will look at. Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 44 says, um, you know, be ready um, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. That is what Matthew 24, 44 says, that we do not know when the Son of Man is coming. He can come at any hour, but uh, how should we be? The important thing is that we need to be ready at all times, even though we do not know when he's coming uh, and uh, he will come in an uh, hour that we least expect him to come, but we need to be uh, ready, okay? And John chapter 14, verse 3, uh, Jesus assures us that, you know, uh, he's, uh, he's going to prepare a place for us and he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. So we know that Jesus uh, ascended back to heaven, but he will come back. And when he comes back, he will receive us back to himself and we will be where he is uh, uh, also. And Acts chapter 1 was 11 uh, it says that, uh, uh, you know, when Jesus ascended into heaven, uh, it says that, you know, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up at the heavens? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will also come in like manner. So just like he went up to heaven, he will descend. Uh, and that is what it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Just the way he was taken up to heaven, he will come in the same manner as you saw him go into heaven. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 um, uh, says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise uh, first. Okay? So, uh, you know, we know that the dead in Christ will rise, and then all the others who believe in him, will be caught up with him in the air. If Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 28 uh, says that, you know, uh, to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. So even as we are eagerly waiting uh, for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he will appear uh, the second time. He will come back uh, again. 
and uh, James chapter 5 verse 8 says so the coming of the Lord is at hand is at hand means it is very close to you uh, it is at hand means something that is reachable that you can reach touch uh, uh, take for yourself so uh, something that is at hand means something that is very close something that is very near so his coming again uh, uh, coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ is at hand it's very close it's very um, near. Uh, can somebody read Second Peter chapter three verse ten, please? Second Peter chapter three verse ten. Anyone would like to read Second Peter chapter three verse ten? Second chapter, Second Peter chapter three and verses ten. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will destroy by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Thank you, Sidikenu. So the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So it'll thief in the night means we don't. Uh, you know, thief comes when we least ex expect him to come. We do not know when he's coming, how he's coming. Uh, so we don't expect him, but, you know, Christ's return will be like that to come at the time when it's least expected, uh, you know, but we need to be uh, uh, prepared at all times. Uh, we need to be ready at all uh, times. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2 says, uh, you know, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So just as he went up, you know, ascended into heaven, the same way he will descend, we will see him just as he is, and we shall be like him. That means our uh, our earthly bodies uh, uh, will uh, will receive new heavenly glorified bodies, uh, uh, you know, that is not uh, perishable, uh, our we will not no longer have our natural bodies, but we will have our spiritual uh, bodies. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will uh, see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. So we know that uh, when Jesus comes, you know, he come in the clouds, everyone will see him. Um, and, uh, you know, people will then realize that he is the true and living uh, God. And uh, But they would be sadly left here on the earth uh, for the seven severe years of tribulation. Uh, but those who go through that time just holding on to their faith in Jesus, when he comes back again uh, at the battle of the Armageddon, you know he will uh, he will usher them into his millennium kingdom and they will uh, live with him for the thousand year rule in the millennium uh, kingdom but we know that when he comes you know everyone will see him and people will mourn because they have refused to believe in him uh, but many will put their faith and trust in him after that okay and Revelation chapter 22, verse 20 uh, says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming uh, quickly. Okay. So um, even though we feel that you know, his coming is being delayed, but uh, we surely know the surety, the confirmed thing that Jesus is coming back again and he is going to come back uh, quickly. Okay. So what do we do as his disciples? Okay, we know that the coming of the Lord is at hand, it's near. Uh, and even as we are looking at uh, uh, the events around us in our world today, in our present situations, uh, you know, there's a big uh, talk. Everyone is just saying that it's, you know, uh, Christ's return is soon. It's very soon because of... Uh, uh, the events that are happening here on earth. So what should be our response? What should we be doing?
what should we do? Because uh, we know that Christ is coming, it's coming is at hand, is soon. What do we need to do? We should be prepared and ready for our King. Okay, we uh, need to be prepared and uh, ready. Uh, we should long for his return. Okay, uh, how do we be prepared and ready? Uh, be ready in the sense uh, in every area of our life, uh, consecrating our lives, um, living a life free from sin and spotless, blameless. Yeah. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, you know, consecrating uh, the members of our body totally to Christ, uh, you know, uh, living a life that is holy and pleasing and acceptable in His sight. Continue being like him, yes, uh, offering ourselves to be sanctified, to be cleansed, so that we can be more Christ-like. Thank you, Rubega. So what should be our response? Uh, one of our response should be like what uh, the uh, Apostle John wrote uh, in uh, uh, the book of Revelation. He says, you know, come, amen, come, Lord Jesus, when it says that, you know, his coming is... Uh, 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 surely I'm coming quickly uh, and John's response is amen even so come Lord Jesus so that should be our response uh, that's uh, uh, written by John in Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 amen come Lord Jesus and we also see that uh, you know that should just not be our response but the Bible also admonishes us trains us that uh, in Titus chapter 2 verses 12 and 13, that we need to live sober, upright, holy, godly lives in this world, even as we await our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that is what Titus chapter 2, verse 12 and 13 says, that we need to live sober, uh, upright and godly lives, even as we await the coming and the appearing of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And uh, Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, reminds us that our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't look at ourselves as earthly citizens, but we look at ourselves as heavenly citizens and we need to live like heaven heavenly citizens in the way that we think, our actions, our reactions in our um, attitudes okay Matthew chapter 22 verse 44 again tells us that we need to be ready uh, for Christ's return uh, so we just uh, don't say like uh, John has mentioned in Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 amen come Lord Jesus but even as we do that even as we say that we need to be faithful in obeying him um, uh, uh, in everything that he, you know, he, uh, in every area of our lives, we need to live in faithful obedience uh, to God. Uh, and we also need to be actively engaged in whatever work he has called us to uh, do. Sometimes, you know, uh, you, uh, uh, look, interpreting the times that we are living in, we can think, okay, these are end time if, uh, you know, so let's not, uh, let me, I, I wanted to actually, uh, uh, you know, do a Bible course. So there's no point now in doing a Bible course because, uh, you know, uh, or study in, in a seminary or go to a Bible college and study because anywhere we are in the end time, uh, you know, Jesus is coming is soon because of all that we are seeing uh, and all that uh, people are interpreting from scripture. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. So, you know, let me not go to Bible college and study. Or some of us are thinking that, you know, uh, God has called me to go to the mission field. And I thought that in 2022, I will launch out into the mission field. Uh, but there's no point in going now because, uh, you know, Jesus coming is at hand. It's very soon. Uh, uh, things are no longer safe in this world. Uh, so let me not venture out. Let me just stay here and, uh, you know, share the gospel with uh, those who do not uh, 
uh, know Christ. Or if you're a pastor or you're a businessman or, uh, you know, um, uh, you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, engage in some, uh, 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 you know, you're working somewhere. Uh, you, 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 you come to a point where you say, let's not plan way into the future for ten years, twenty years, because I really don't think we are going to live that long now. Uh, you know, uh, so let's just plan for a year or two and see how things goes. And if Christ does not come back in a year or two, then we may plan for another year after that. Uh, but let's not make long-term goals or plans and uh, so as pastors you know or uh, missionaries or uh, uh, people in the business field uh, we uh, uh, we will uh, kind of uh, that will become a hindrance for us to plan things to venture out into new uh, 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 fields of doing uh, uh, ministry or business or uh, uh, putting our uh, hands into starting a new business or uh, launching into some uh, new fields that we think there's uh, great possibilities in venturing because uh, uh, we think that Christ's return is coming soon. But that's not how we need to live. Uh, you know, we need to be actively engaged in whatever work God has called us to. As is to say, we have, you know, the rest of our lives to live um, um, so, uh, yes, we do not know when he is going to return, um, but, uh, you know, on that day, uh, there will no doubt be some missionaries uh, just who are leaving to the mission field, but they cannot go to the mission field because Christ has uh, come back. They will never reach their destination. There will be some students who are studying in uh, in uh, uh, in schools or colleges or uh, in, in theological colleges uh, who have finished their studies and crisis return and all of their training and all of their studies, uh, you know, will never be put to any use. Uh, because, you know, crisis returned or, uh, you know, some people who are doing research in certain fields, you know, they're just handing in their uh, uh, doctrinal uh, dissertations on that day and Christ returns and all their years uh, of uh, uh, research that they have put in, you know, their papers will never be published. Uh, it will never have an influence on the world. Um, but, you know, that should not uh, stop us because uh, those of us who have uh, believed in Christ Jesus, uh, who have received him as our personal savior, who have been sincere and faithful uh, in uh, what God has called us to do, uh, you know, toiling hard, laboring hard, uh, you know, we will receive uh, the reward. Jesus will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, you have been faithful over uh, little things. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. We read this in Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 21. So that should be our attitude, not thinking that let's not venture in, let's not plan, let's not get into anything uh, new. But, um, you know, put your hands to the plow, uh, do things faithfully, diligently, plan, uh, execute your plans. Uh, even though you, uh, we never know Christ might return uh, the next hour, he might come any moment today, but we just go actively uh, planning, engaging, using the resources, the time, uh, the calling, uh, the gifts, the talents uh, that he has uh, uh, blessed us with. You want to produce an a uh, song album, you know, you've written some songs, uh, go ahead, produce it. You're writing a book, go ahead, finish it. Uh, whatever you are engaged in, uh, do it faithfully, sincerely. Um, uh, you know, it might not be published. The album might not come out. God might return before that. But, you know, uh, you have been faithful in what God has entrusted to you. And uh, you will hear... Uh, Jesus saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of the uh, master. Okay. So that should be uh, our uh, attitude. That should be what we as his disciples do, even as we eagerly long for his uh, return. Okay. Um, we do not know when Christ will return. Uh, 
there are uh, several passages that uh, indicate that we do not know and cannot know the time when Christ will return. Matthew chapter 22 verse 44 says, The Son of Man is uh, coming at an hour you do not expect. Matthew 25 verse 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Uh, and Jesus said, um, in uh, Mark chapter uh, 13, verse 32 and 33, uh, but of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And he says, take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. Now, uh, you know, wherever in these verses we read about the word hour, did not know the hour, the time when, uh, uh, when uh, you know Christ will return. The word hour is best understood uh, in a more general sense, and not just referring to a time when something will take place. Uh, not necessarily a sixty-minute uh, time period, uh, but it's just uh, uh, you know pointing. Uh, 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 the point of these passages is actually that. Jesus is telling us that we cannot know when he is coming back because it will be uh, an, at, at an unexpected time, but we should be ready at all times for his uh, return. Okay. Uh, next week, we will look at the signs that precede uh, the return of Christ. We will stop here. Uh, any one of you have any questions? Any questions? No questions? Okay, I just noticed that um, um, the final assessment for um, uh, I think systematic theology is uh, on April uh, 15th, right? And April 15th, yes, um, that is the third assessment for a doctoral foundation systematic theology is uh, was scheduled on April 15th, but April 15th is Good Friday. It's a holiday and it's a busy weekend for all of us, uh, most of us who are ministering in church uh, because of Good Friday and, uh, and Easter Sunday. Uh, so I don't want to disturb you with, uh, you know, uh, submitting your assessment. Uh, so could we move that to um, April 20th? Is that okay? April 20th is a Wednesday. I'll release it on April 20th and you can submit it on April 22nd or uh, April 23rd, which is a Saturday. Is that okay? Can I post the ass uh, assessment for uh, systematic theology on April 20th, which is a Wednesday, and you can submit it by April 23rd, which is a Saturday, or, or 22nd, which is a Friday. Okay, two of them. Thank you, ladies. Uh, two ladies have said, okay, what about uh, the men in the class? It's okay, Pastor. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you, Siddhikinu. So then we'll uh, have the, uh, thank you, Lyndon. We'll have it on, April, I'll post it on April 20th, and then you can take two or three days to submit the uh, assessment. Uh, Lyndon, you had um, uh, posted some message on the stream page. I didn't quite understand. Uh, were you able to post yeah, your initially, initially, it was confusing. When I tried to access the uh, the, the classroom uh, from a mobile, it showed uh, I, I had a, a pending assessment. So immediately I dropped in a message as if I've missed one. And then I tried to log in to my, from my computer and then I saw that I've already uh, submitted my assessment. So I've said kindly ignore my previous message. Oh, okay. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? Okay, if not, we'll uh, end class here. Uh, thank you all for joining class. Have a, 
a blessed day ahead and a blessed weekend and i will see you uh, next friday thank you everyone